Tony Lockman, you're the managing director of Top Rank here in Castle Blaney. What have we in the complex, in fact? Yeah. We have a recording studio and tape plant. We make our own tapes and we have our own record company, Top Spin Records. And what else have we now? You have, have bands, a, of course. We have a print works called Top Print and we have seven or eight show bands. And we have a monthly entertainment magazine called Entertainment News. And you employ how many, would you say, roughly? In the complex here at the moment, there's 31, 32 full time. On and off, there's maybe eight or ten casual people walking on and off. Like and then know. if you add in the bands, how many is that? Well, I'd say about 120 altogether. And of course, we also with us here, Robert Irwin. Robert, what in fact do you do with yourself? Uh, I look after Big Town. And does and Tom take much looking after? Uh, not too bad, not, not too, too hard to handle. And you also handle our friends, the Apaches, I That's think. That's right, yeah, yeah. They're a dangerous lot. They are indeed, as I saw very early on. Now, Tony, your business wasn't always entertainment. What was your first business? Uh, I worked in a quarry, making blo stacking blocks. Now, you better explain to us what stacking blocks means. Uh, no, it's, I'll never forget it, any. It's not... Uh, it's not a very pleasant job, but... Concrete blocks? Concrete blocks, yeah. And you'd work long days at that, I suppose? Yeah, uh, from 8 in the morning to 7 in the evening. And that you'd must have, have been... You'd have to stack them up in uh, heaps of 56 at a time, like, you know. You want to be good at the sums as well, of course, obviously, uh, then. And that was hard on the hands, surely? It was, yeah. We'd wear uh, pads to be two people, one on each side of the row of blocks. And, uh, You'd start at the top of the row, you know, when you'd walk down to the bottom of it, you'd start at the far end, you'd walk back up, you keep going up and down five days a week from eight in the morning to seven in the evening. And then one day you decided that uh, it wasn't good enough and you went into the big top business. Well, I ran a marquee and I got a few handy pound out of it. I'd say I got more in the one carnival than I got for 52 weeks <coughs> with the blocks, so... I said, the blocks yeah. had to go? The blocks had to go, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you were also a bouncer? Who told you that? Now? I heard that yeah. in Castle Blaine. You were almost <laughs> everything in Castle Blaine. Yeah, in Castle Blaine. Yeah, I was a bouncer in the local ballroom here, the Embassy Club. And for, what was uh, the money like for that? Pound and eight. Pound and eight. And was it difficult work? Oh, it was. Many a black eye you got now. And I suspect you gave many a black eye too, did you? I know I'm a quiet sort of a fella. It's gentle creature. Oh, a civil sort of a fella. I'd say that, all right. When I'm going to hit you a kick, I take off my boots. <laughs> yes, I'm glad there's a distance between us here. <laughs> tell, tell us about the very first gig. It was over in Newtown Hamilton in uh, County Armagh. And uh, we arrived at the hall about half eight, and the caretaker opened it up, and he, and he put on the lights, and he asked me for the rent. It was two pound. He says, will you give me the rent? I'm going for a couple of pints. And I said, you'll be back later. I says, no, about half eleven, when things is quiet and nobody about, just put off the lights and pull the doors after you. Mm -hmm. I said, the dance is on the half one, not beyond the half one here. He says, you'll be away long gone home before that. So, sure enough, about half eleven, I was sitting in the pay box waiting for them to come and the band was playing away like good ones and nobody came. No customers? Not one, not one. So they packed up and went home. And that wasn't the only night that happened? Well, we done that ten consecutive nights. I tell you, you're a sticker, I tell you <laughs> Yeah, ten consecutive nights. Because there were all venues that wasn't running. There were nearly one-night jobs, open them up and take the cobwebs off the roof, like, you know. Give the caretaker a couple of quid. Give the caretaker a couple of pounds. Then when did luck turn for you? I was hammer I, for about five years, I was getting a tight now. If I had got my job back in the quarry, I'd say I would have took it. Then Philomena Bagley was going to pack in the business after she got married. That'd be six years now next Easter. And I spoke to her at a charity concert and she said she was packing it in. I said, why not have a band of your own? Mm. Give it a fling link. So she said she would. So that was the turning point. You went on from there <coughs> to here, so to speak. Well, that's what does success mean to you? I don't know. You get satisfaction out of what you do. Like, you know, uh, I enjoy doing what I do. And uh, I think if I ever feel at any time that I don't enjoy the work, 
I wouldn't be in the business because it's not a business you could be in unless you enjoyed doing it. And the last five or six years, I never really counted at work. I counted, you're meeting people and you're here, you're there, and you're getting your work done, but it's enjoy, I enjoy doing it. And I think, uh, the, the a good ball. living, good living. And sure it makes a change from concrete blocks anyway. Does. The wife's a hard woman. She she holds Joan. She holds really? the, the reins and the money like him. And you're the quiet man, of course. Well, I'm the quiet man. Still getting the odd black eye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank That's you very right. much, Tony. No.